Don't skip. No, bad. Skipping is bad. You should listen what I'm going to say about each hero, so you know what makes him so strong when you run to rank up solo. Hello my friends! So, it's a new season again, and I want to give you 3 heroes for each role that you can main in this season, so you have it easier to rank up. Before we start, I want that you write your heroes you want to main in this season into the comments. Let's see how many of your heroes are on my list. We start with the golden lane. The two most OP heroes here are Nathan and Clint. But even though they receive nerfs, they will stay on the top of the ban list until they receive another nerf. So I wouldn't recommend them right now, simply because you can't use them in the majority of your matches. Instead, I can recommend you two other MMs who are the strongest pick right now, and that will be Brody and Beatrix. Both of them can survive on their own against pretty much any enemy. Beatrix can safely farm with a sniper rifle if she plays against a strong early game hero for example, and if you play against another MM, you can dominate your lane with her, since she is one of the only MMs who deals already a good amount of damage in the early game. Brody on the other hand has great survival skills with the second and ult, while also dealing a good amount of damage. Once you locked on your counterpart, you can start to arrest them and only give them the choice to retreat, what means they can farm, or they try to come near to you, which is really difficult against him because of his second skill and ult. Both of them are also strong in the late game. Although a MM like Moskov or Aerothal is stronger, these kind of MM just really lack the early game potential, so before they reach the point where they become strong, the game is often already lost. Now to the third hero on the gold lane. This was more difficult, because there are many awesome gold lane heroes. In the end I chose a hero that is maybe not the obvious choice, Bane. Now, why should you use Bane on the gold lane? First, you should use the spell Arrival, since your main goal with Bane is to push. Secondly, his first skill is perfect to harass weak early game heroes, so you can dominate your lane against those kind of heroes. And because you can control your lane, you can help out in the jungle area and in the mid lane, and easily go back top with your arrival spell if your counterpart tries to push. Once you've reached the mid game, you will try to push whenever possible. Always have that in mind. I need to push. You may not have the best medals with this kind of playstyle, because pushing is always risky. But would you rather have a 65% win rate with bronze medals or a 50% win rate with MVP loss medals? If you don't care about medals and only want to win games, Bane is one really good hero to do that. Also, another advantage is that you can use him also very well in the jungle or on the XP lane. Now, I also want to give you the honorable mentions for the gold lane. These are heroes who are also very strong, but just didn't make it into the top 3. If you use them to rank up, you're doing nothing wrong basically. So, the honorable mentions are Alice, Aldog, Argus, Farsa, Lunox, Lilia, Bruno, the Cat Girl, Popo and Koopa, and Kimi. Next, we go on the other side of the map, the XP lane. First, the new hero Edith is obviously banned in the section now. Banned in the banned in the section? In the ban section now. My god. And joining here is as always Paquito. Although he's not on the top of the ban list anymore. The power creep is real here. But who need a boxer anyway, when you can play a freaking dragon? Yuzong has the potential to 1v5 the whole enemy's team if they're dumb enough to not run away from him in his dragon form. The lifesteal he gains from his passive is so huge that there are not many heroes who can deal with him in the 1v1. If you learn how to activate his passive quickly, you become an unstoppable machine. The complete opposite to a dragon is an X hero. This is more a case of fight feet of fury. The little girl with a big scythe. She has everything you need to dominate your lane. Good damage, awesome lifesteal abilities and two skills with strong CC effects. She is of course not a hero with burst damage, but slow and steady you can lower the enemy's HP, while you recover yours from the enemy and everything around you that is alive. In ganks she is also super strong and can basically act like a second tank because of her CC and lifesteal. So if you need a hero for the XP lane that can deal with pretty much any enemy, he is one of the best choices for you. As a third choice I want to mention multiple heroes, because they all have only one purpose in this case. Pushing. I'm talking about heroes like Sun, Masha, Badang or as mentioned before Bane. One problem we all face as solo queue players is that we can't trust our allies. But with a hero that can push fast and is strong in the 1v1 situation, you can not only push turrets but also the ranks up quickly. You are less dependent on your teammates with a hero like this because whatever they do, you are pushing and therefore keep at least one enemy busy. With the spell arrival you can also jump in between the lanes 
and push the turrets faster away than the enemy can react. And the more turrets you push away, the less safe your enemies are from your allies. And when the enemy is dominating you, just try to backdoor them and get a sneaky win. These are actually the best wins you can have. Now to the honorable mentions. Fovios, whenever you play against a hero with dash skills, Barats, Lapu Lapu, Uranus and Esmeralda. After we were now on both side lanes, it's time to move to the mid lane. Bant is of course Valentina. She basically got even buffed instead of nerfed despite being on the top of the band section like pfft. This lane is almost completely dominated by mages. And that's why the first hero is an assassin. Well, assassin mage actually. It's a cute demon, Selina. She's not the easiest hero to play. But once you manage to aim her second skill, have fun annoying the enemies non-stop. She has not only one of the longest stuns in the game, but you can also deal a huge amount of damage with her. With your first skill, you can also reveal some parts of your map for your team, so she is easily one of the best support heroes for the team. If you need a mage that is easier to play, because you just need one to pick up every once in a while, then Vale is probably the best choice for you. Use for his first and ult the damage increase option, and for his second skill the knockup effect. Stay in bushes and once the enemy comes by, boom, they're dead. In ganks it's even easier because on the chaos, many enemies don't even notice when you're getting close to them. With his passive ability to get more movement speed, he's also awesome to rotate up and down, so you can support the whole enemy's team with your CC skills and damage. The last hero who's also awesome at rotating is Farsa. The enemy is in range or a gank is happening, just nuke them to the freaking moon with your ult and it's easy GG. Well, it's not that easy. You need a really good positioning with her. And playing against super fast heroes is also not ideal. But if that's not the case, you can turn around any gang with your nuke ability. And not only that, you can use your ult for example to secure turrets when your team is taking them down. Plus, whenever you're in a difficult situation, you can just fly away easily into safety and laugh at your enemies while doing so. Now again, the honorable mentions. Kagura, Eve, Luigi, Sicilian, Lilia, Lunox, Matilda and Beatrix. Let's move on now to the least favorite role for many players, the Rome role. Although you can have a lot of fun as a Roma, especially since not all Romas must be tanks. We start with my go to tanks though, Kufra and Tigreal. Both of them have super strong CC skills, so if you are able to make a good setup and you don't have 4 headless check-ins in your team, you can make your enemy throw the phone against the wall. One godly setup is often enough to win an entire gank. And honestly, if you ever catch 5 enemies with either Tigreals or Kufra's ult, which resulted in a total wipe up for the enemy, then you want to do it again. It's almost as good as get a savage by yourself. If you have a lot of bulky heroes on your team though, then Estes is probably the top roamer. He can make your whole team almost unkillable and the enemy can't really do anything against it except running away or getting beaten down to death. The team composition is important here though. If you have a lot of burst damage heroes in your team, you better choose one of the two CC monsters I just mentioned before. As honorable mentions we have Matilda, who actually will deserve a spot in the top 3 as well. Johnson, if you have a strong partner like Bane or Odette, Hylos, Lolita, Angela when you have a bulky jungler like Roger for example and most likely Minotaur once he receives his buff. Last we have our lovely junglers. In the corner of shame we have Eamon and Nathan. Come back after you get serious nerfs, you tryhards. As first option we have the bulky version of a jungler and it's my good friend Roger. He deals a huge amount of damage and can sustain a lot. He has the ability to become invincible for a brief moment, has range and melee attacks and once you are below 40% HP you are officially his prey and you can only pray that your allies come to save you from him. The hardcore version of this is when he has Angela who holds him. Then he becomes almost unkillable and you can only try to run what will not work though. Someone you can't run away from as well is Hayabusa. With his ult you become invincible as well just for a much longer time while the enemy squishy hero is screaming for their lives. If you manage to ult a squishy enemy when no other unit is around it's almost a guaranteed kill. With his first skill you also have another skill that can deal a huge amount of damage and once you learn how to use his shadows effectively you become a nightmare for any squishy hero. Just make sure that your shadows are still active after your ult is over. Otherwise if you didn't manage to kill every enemy around it could backfire horribly. As last hero we have another hero who can become invincible for a brief moment. This seems to be the top argument for this role. It's our pretty boy Lancelot. For him you need some quick fingers to control his dashes but once you manage to do that you can easily just dash towards the enemy's backline, take them out 
and back out again without a scratch on your pretty face. It is really difficult to catch a good Lancelot, except when you have lockdown skills. So, really high damage, the ability to move faster than your enemies can see and the most handsome hero in the whole game. Do you need any more arguments? I don't think so, but maybe you want to learn now how to become a perfect jungler, which you can do when you check out this video. Also, a huge shout out to my patrons Twisted J, Mist, Corbear and Garo OP. If you want to support my work as well, here you have a link for the page. See you over there.